evil, gang, is a no thing. Watch this. Um, one of these atheistic Marxist professors that loves to eat Christians for lunch, the story is told, was uh, before his class and, um, and said, did God create everything? And some brave student said, in this very Darwinistic environment, yeah, perfect, the prof said. Let me ask you a question. Is there evil? Yeah, there's evil. Well, the prof said, okay, if God created everything, then God created evil since evil exists. And according to the principle that our works define who we are, then God is evil. And so there was silence in the room. And the professor was quite pleased with himself that he had silenced this young, naive freshman. But then another freshman raised their hand, one that had thought through this and said this, prof, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in cold? And the prof said, what kind of question is that? Of course I believe in cold. Who thinks cold doesn't exist? What kind of question is this? The young man replied, in fact, sir, cold does not exist. According to the laws of physics, what we consider cold is in reality the absence of heat. Everybody and every object is susceptible to study when it has or, has or transmits energy. And heat is what makes a body or matter have or transmit energy. Absolute zero, or 460 degrees negative Fahrenheit, is the total absence of heat. All matter becomes inert and incapable of reaction at that temperature. Cold does not exist. We have created the word cold to describe how we feel if we have too little heat. Prof, let me ask you another question. Does darkness exist? Of course it does, the prof said. The student replied, no, once again, no, you're wrong, sir. Darkness does not exist either. Darkness is in reality simply the absence of light. Light we can study, but not darkness. In fact, we can use Newton's prism to break white light into many colors and study the various wavelengths of each color. You cannot measure darkness, sir. A simple ray of light can break into a world of darkness and illuminate it. How can you know how dark a certain space is? You know how dark it is by measuring the amount of light present. Isn't that correct? Darkness is a term used by man to describe what happens when there is no light. So, sir, let me ask you a question. Does evil exist? The professor said, look, I already said that evil exists. Of course it exists. We see it all the time, all throughout humanity. It's in the multitude of crime and violence everywhere in the world. These manifestations are nothing but evil. To this, the student replied, look, evil does not exist, sir, or at least it does not exist unto itself. Evil is simply the absence of God. It is just like darkness and cold, a word that man has created to describe the absence of God. God did not create evil. Evil is like faith or lo- evil is not like faith or love that existed long ago, just as faith and love existed and light and heat existed. Evil is the result of what happens when man does not have God's love present in his heart. It is like the cold that comes when there is no heat or the darkness that comes when there is no light. So, Prof, you sit down. Now, look, that story has been around as a teaching tool for a long time. Some well-meaning believers have said, that was Newton. I mean, that was uh, Einstein. He was the student, and they forwarded it to all their friends in some impressive way. It was not Einstein. And you won't look like an Einstein, and you'll lose your authority if you just forward stuff mindlessly. But the truth in that story, okay, the truth in that story stands. What I want to say to you is evil is the absence of what should be. Now let's go back and look at this again. So we don't want to say that evil is something. What we'll say is no, evil is the absence of good. Evil is what happens when man leaves God. Evil is where we go without God. That's why God takes us. Guess what it says in Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. He has brought us out of darkness into light. He has brought us out of where we went without God, the absence of light. God said, I am light. The absence of me is darkness. You want back in the light, come back to me. You live in chaos and evil. Why? Because you have left me. Come back to me. So, here's another little syllogism. Um, Every creature God made is perfect. Then you will go on to say, um, perfect creatures cannot do what is imperfect. Therefore, Every creature must only act perfectly. By the way, James chapter 1, verse 17 says, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. So we would say every creature God made is perfect. But if every creature he made is perfect, perfect creatures can't do what's imperfect, they say. Therefore, every creature must only act perfectly. The problem with this is in the second premise. Perfect creatures... In order to be perfect, you've got to love. In order to be able to love, you can't be, as Einstein said, a wind-up toy. If part of perfection is the ability to love, to give yourself to somebody else, you can't be a robot. In order to love, you must be able to choose. 
In other words, one guy said it this way, but rather philosophically, money can buy you a real good dog, but it cannot buy you the wag of its tail. Or absolute power can make you obey, but it cannot make you love. God is not a rapist. He is a lover, and he created us to love him, so he gave us the ability to choose. He revealed himself in all his perfection and glory, and we chose not to love him. Perfect creatures have the ability to love, therefore they have the perfect the ability to choose, and when we chose not to love light, guess what we bought into? Darkness. When we chose not to embrace good, guess what we became? Evil. So, let's look at this one more time. God made everything perfect. One perfect thing God made is free creatures. Free creatures, uh, freedom allows for the choice of evil. Therefore, imperfection can arise out of perfection. See Genesis 3. Now watch this. If God is all good, someone would say, he would destroy evil. If God is all good and all powerful, he could destroy evil. Evil is not destroyed, and so this is where finite godism comes in. Therefore, either God is not all good or he's not all powerful. And what Kushner said as he watched his little three-year-old son die from a very awful disease where his body accelerated in the aging process and deteriorated right before his eyes, and he cried out to his God and said, God, how could you let this be? You must be good. I don't know where else to turn, but you're obviously not God or you would stop this. And so Kushner redefined God. He neutered him and said he's good. He's just not all powerful. What's the problem in this? It assumes that just because he could, he would already. Here's what I would tell you. If God is all good, he will defeat evil. If God is all good, he can defeat evil. Evil is not yet defeated. Therefore, God one day will completely defeat evil. Evil has been judged. There is a historical event called the cross and a resurrection that goes with it. God has said, there is something which I detest and hate, and yet there is something that I love. And so in order to bring that which I hate back to me in love, I must judge evil. And he did it perfectly with an eternal sacrifice to appease his eternally perfect nature. What I want to say to you here tonight is that the only, the thing that I marvel at with God is why he hasn't already closed the canon of history and moved rapidly to make sure that evil is extinguished. And there is only one verse in the scripture which gives me a solution to why God has not already completely eradicated evil. And it might be you tonight. The scripture says the Lord is not slow. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Listen to what God says. I am letting even my beloved ones live in chaos and sin and suffering and death and disease, promising them that I will one day remove these momentary light afflictions in light of eternity. That's what he calls them. And I'm going to tell you what, some of these momentary light afflictions are not so light. Read this week's Watermark News. How God can allow a young girl to be sexually abused by an atheistic father how God can allow terror and war and hunger and despair to reign the way that it does on this earth and not come crashing in to rescue those he loves from evil, I marvel at. But he tells me, here's why, Todd. Because there are still some that are out there that will have to deal with their evil eternally if I close the canon of redemption right now. And I love them even as I have loved you. And you, by my grace, dealt with your evil by trusting in my provision for evil, that you might be brought out of darkness into light, and I love them. So I am going to ask you, in the midst of chaos, live with hope. I'm going to ask you, in the midst of evil, overcome it with good, to walk as I have walked, to speak of the hope that I have speaked of. I don't begrudge you that it's difficult. When I was there, I cried out to my father, have you lost your mind? What are you doing? Why are you forsaking me? I know you'll feel that way, but know this, I have never forsaken you. I will never leave you. And a day is coming when I will deal with evil ultimately. Evil is here because men have left me. Come to me and live triumphantly, righteously, and with hope in the midst of this chaos until such a day as I will come. If you are here today, do you think that God would take it lightly that you continue to spurn his kindness while he allows folks to suffer that he loves, so that you might respond to his grace. I think not. And so I would encourage you to not take lightly the kindness of God and to come to him. If you are here this evening 
and you have never dealt with your evil in the one perfect way that God says evil can be dealt with, I invite you to come and let us share with you the hope that can be found in Jesus Christ and his offering himself up for you. If you are here tonight and you have trusted in Christ and your world is filled with pain and chaos, I invite you to come and let us pray for you and let us comfort you with the comfort with which we have been comforted and let us bear your burdens and cry with you and sustain you and tell you to press on until that day. And if you, at this moment, are living on this earth filled with pain and death with some sense of hope, go into that world, overcome evil, with good. Comfort others in the way that you have been comforted. Embrace yourself because we ain't home yet, but he's coming.